Uh, hello, uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I brought you my our our research at SUNY Canton. Uh, we did the effects of different uh, percentage of slag and fly ash on compressive strength and carbon footprint of lightweight concrete. Because with the goal, we all want a greener and uh, I guess cleaner concrete for our, our future. So uh, just a general introduction. Uh, Lightweight concrete is uh, a concrete that is a lot more porous and has a, obviously a lighter weight, um, so it's easier to work with. And it, um, with the lighter weights, it's easier to move, and uh, that transportation cost will greatly uh, reduce the carbon emissions that is put out from the vehicles and the uh, tanks. Uh, in addition to using the lightweight aggregate, uh, we also um, obviously supplemented in those other uh, cementious materials. In, in ours, we used uh, slag and fly ash for our two. Um, so like I said, the, uh, the objective was to see if we can conduct and find a mix that doesn't uh, reduce our strength and uh, keeps us uh, the same strength. <laughs> And like I said previously mentioned, it is better for the emissions. And uh, with previous research, we've found that they, um, you can see between the difference between the normal weight concrete and the lightweight concrete, uh, there's a very difference between to our ozone, to the acidification, and with the water um, affecting in like our wastewater things, it'd be a slower uh, thing. And then just again back to the weight cost, it, due to um, it being less, it's a, it's a cost effective, it's more cost effective per square inch. And because of the, it's lighter and easier to work with, more people can get in there and do a better job. Um, so what the lightweight concrete can do is instead of having a huge dead load from the um, huge concrete and just normal weight, uh, it makes it so it's easier to move and transport. And then on average, um, constructing a floor is usually like 10 days. They were found that lightweight, it's, it's cutting the time almost in half be, um, with the things. Another big concern is as more seismic activity and earthquakes are happening, uh, you can see that with the normal weight concrete, um, a lot of damages is still being stuck and all that heavy weight is crushing and staying on top of um, things. So with a lighter base, the shaking will have less detrimental effects. And the thermal insulation that comes with lightweight aggregate is a lot better because due to the porous um, things, the air is able to go through and it stays conductive. Um, here I have two examples of where other lightweight concrete is being used. In Georgia, they have a 55-story um, building. And in uh, Chicago, Illinois, they have a 54-story skyscraper. And uh, for the Bank of America building, they even used, they were thinking of using a thinner slab uh, to the standards, but uh, the test made it so they, theirs was even thicker, just more conservative to do it. But even with that thicker slab, um, compared to their original design with a normal concrete mix, uh, it was uh, over a million dollars cheaper to make and the dead load was reduced by about 13,000 pounds. Um, and then just for the the team that was working on the Chicago building, they, they thought that it was a, a very easy process to use and work with. But to our, um, this is our example of what the buckets of our materials. So slag is a byproduct of the steel market and while they're producing it, it's these amounts are um, made and now we thought and hoped that we could use it as a cement. And while um, fly ash, instead of being in the steel market, it's in the coal. And these, we got these sourced from the local companies around uh, Jefferson County, they have a steel plant that we took um, from, and then the fly ash was from a quarry up in like Norwood, north, northern New York. So here are, um, we made seven mixed designs over the course and that could have been different. It was about a three month process. And we started with a base of just no um, cementious material, just having a baseline of the actual uh, cement. 
and then we would uh, change uh, the route. And represented the C is the cement, F the fly ash, and the S the slag. So um, we just, and during our testing, we created three cylinders just to have an average because we didn't want to just have one cylinder. Um, so we wanted to have an average amount. For our mix two, we used um, silica sand as our fine aggregate, and that's usually in a lightweight concrete. The the fine aggregate is what is the lightweight, but for ours, uh, we kept our course as normal weight instead. Uh, we did that just to kind of make it be the effect of the actual uh, supplement. So uh, here are results that we got for all the seven mixes, and it was um, all of them were tested after 28 days, and uh, the average density between all of them was 130 uh, pounds per uh, cubic foot, and then compared to a normal weight concrete, it's usually in the 150 to 155 range. Um, for our the mix that had the best was the composition that had 50% of the normal, um, well, it's 10% and 10% because our cementous material overall was always 20% with um, a water ratio of 0.45. So uh, as you can see the results here, mix, mix 3 had the best um, compressive strength and it was over 7,000 when our normal concrete was just passing the 6,000. Uh, as in conclusion, uh, we just showed that it, this is a new and developing market that will be moving, but the emissions that are, that are reduced from it, it will greatly increase the air quality and uh, overall sustainability of our world. Um, obviously, the impact of slag was a lot better in our research than the use of the fly ash was. However, um, we still want future research doing the things, um, doing work with those products. Uh, we, right now, we're doing more testing with between uh, normal weight and lightweight concrete, and we have four beams of each ready. And right when we come back, we're going to break them open and see if they uh, match. Uh, here are our references, and just thank you for, uh, for your time.